As revealed by the title in today's episode, I will be talking to you about two things, the SIGPLUS M1 cycling computer and the accompanying SIGPLUS C3 uh, uh, sensor. Let's dive right in because we have a lot to discuss, starting with the unboxing. We don't find too many accessories. There's a very simple mount included, which can be used to attach it to the bicycle, to the handlebars, some DHA. Now we find a rubber strap to secure this mount, there, um, a USB cable for charging, which is a USB-C cable. And we also find a manual, which will be important because it contains quite a lot of information that we need to know. The C3 sensor is even simpler. We find two rubber straps to attach it to the back of the pedal, crank, or the wheel, hub. Besides the two rubber straps, uh, we also find two additional rubber pieces inside, each with a different profile on the back. One is used to attach the sensor to the wheel hub and the other to the crank. So that's about it for the unboxing. And I'll continue with its exterior since I had it in my hand. It's a very simple tiny thing weighing just a few grams. This sensor can be used for two types of functions. It can be used for measuring pedal cadence and speed. To measure speed, it should be placed on the wheel hub and for cadence, it should be placed on the crank. To choose which function you want to use it for, you can turn the back cover to the right or left side. In one direction, it will be a speed sensor and on the other side, it will measure pedal cadence. When measuring pedal cadence, a green LED flashes at the front and for speed, a blue LED does, indicating the current mode. If you buy two of them, you can obviously use one for speed and the other for measuring pedal cadence. The computer is much more important as it has a lot of settings and a wealth of knowledge. What is important to know about it is that it has a 2.9 inch display, a LCD, backlit and a monochrome screen. What is important to know about it is that it has built in positioning, supports a three satellite system. So this positioning is relatively fast and relatively accurate. It is very, very important uh, that it has a large battery. The manufacturer says it can last 30, 35 hours on a single charge, which may not seem like much. But if you consider that I, for example, cycle three times a week for two hours each time, that's six hours a week. So overall, I don't need to charge it for five weeks, meaning this device can operate for a month on a single charge, uh, which is a huge plus. It is very, very important that it is Ant Plus compatible. And plus compatibility is a protocol, and through this protocol, you can connect sensors to it, such as the C3 sensor, as well as other sensors. The use of the anti-plus compatibility um, protocol is very important, because many manufacturers use this protocol. For example, smartwatch manufacturers as well. So if you have an anti-plus smartwatch, you don't need a separate sensor to detect your heart rate. You can connect the watch to it. Many manufacturers produce torque sensors, speed sensors, and other types of sensors, and you can connect these to this device through the Ant Plus protocol. What is perhaps more important is that it has a fairly large memory. It can save 150 hours of travel, which is perhaps not so much needed because the computer has a phone application and you can synchronize with Strava through the phone application, and you save the data with Strava anyway. But if you go to an environment, to a place where the trip is 150 hours long and you can't synchronize in the meantime, then nothing is lost because you have 150 hours of travel. You can save with it. Well, that's about it for the specifications. Let's delve a bit into its inner workings because it can do quite a lot. You can control it with three buttons, which are located here at the bottom. And there are six functions associated with these three buttons. This means there is a short press and a long press. With this button, you can turn it on, turn it off, start saving the route if it's on and stop saving the route. With the middle button, if you have stopped saving the route, you can perform synchronization and measure laps. And with this button, you can change the data displayed on the screen. Here, of course, you have the usual things uh, uh, such as speed and the percentage of incline or decline. You can also see the sensor data, of course. With the button, you can switch to see the current data, the maximum data you achieved during the journey, or just an averaging. So, um, so you know, this is the usual thing. And um, uh, essentially, this is not something insanely special. If you turn on the computer, the data will appear on it. And what is very important to know here, and this is somewhat a disadvantage compared to more expensive devices, is that you cannot change the data on it, so the layout is fixed. 
This is the layout you have to use, you cannot change it. This is mostly bothersome if you don't use a sensor, because here at the bottom, in this field, data from three sensors can appear, torque, pedal rotation, and heart rate. And if you don't have a sensor, then this field will be completely empty. I have a sensor which I am currently using as a pedal rotation sensor. Hopefully the data will appear. Yes, you can see that a zero data has appeared. Now the pedal on my bike is naturally rotating at zero. It's also important that with this button, you can not only change the data on the display, but also enter the C menu. Yes, here it is. In the C menu, there are seven points on which you might want to make changes. These data are as follows. Here C2 is important. With it you can add sensors. With C3 you can set the wheel circumference, which is important for speed measurement. If you don't have a speed sensor, then this is unnecessary. And for example, with C4 you can add, set the time zone, uh, but you can also set it to use the primary unit of measurement and things like that. So these are basic settings available in the C menu. All the settings are included in the description, in the added description where you uh, read through it. Regarding the item itself, I must definitely say that it looks very good, it is well built, the materials are good, the plastics are thick, and there is also rain protection. There is also impact protection, this little plastic or more precisely rubber cover that is on it. This somewhat protects it from water as well as from impacts. This is good too. On the back there is a large rubber cap, uh, and under the large rubber cap is the Type-C connector. Through the Type-C connector, you can only charge, you cannot transfer data through it. Data can only be transferred via the phone application, and through this you can also perform Strava. Synchronization. Regarding the phone application, I can't really say much. It's called the SICK Plus Fit app, and, well, it has four tabs, but you won't really use these tabs much because they are needed for the settings. On the first tab, you can see uh, your weekly statistics and below that, the saved routes. If you open a route, you can see the map you traveled on and below that, you can see the graphs showing speed, elevation change and pedal rotation changes. I don't have other sensors, so I can't measure anything else. You can view these graphs separately or compare them side by side. You can see on the map, uh, what pedal rotation you used at a specific point, what speed you were traveling at, whether you were going downhill, uphill, etc., etc., etc. So this is good. As I said, it's very important that it has Strava synchronization. You don't have to do anything with it, but you need to connect the app with Strava once. Once you've done this, it will sync with it from then on, and this will automatically sync with Strava. There is one thing I would definitely mention, and well, it's a bit, a bit painful for me, namely that I was born in 69, and here you have to set the birth date in the app, but you can only scroll back to 1970. So uh, at the cycle, they think that people born before 1970 are either no longer alive, or if they are, they shouldn't be cycling. Well, this revealed that I've gotten old and it's a bit painful. But let this be the biggest problem, that uh, according to the application, I'm a little younger than my actual age. Well, that's about all the issues I can report regarding the phone, in uh, the application, and the synchronization. And there's one more thing, uh, but it's really a minor issue, which is that when I synchronize the software with Strava, it always automatically gives some Chinese name to the current route in Strava. In Strava, uh, we always automatically get some name like afternoon cycling or, or I don't know, there's always something, some silly name. Now this is not in English, but in Chinese, but you can change it and obviously you will change it. And then it won't be in Chinese anymore. So this is really not such a huge mistake. What experience have I gathered with this gadget? Well, uh, basically I have only gathered good experiences with it because at the level where I use it uh, for the functions I use it for, it is absolutely perfect. It has a small, well visible display. So I wear glasses, and even without glasses, I can see everything perfectly on it, not just the speed value, but also the uh, pedal rotation. I can see this data. I can see the time on it. I can see everything on it without glasses, which is very, very important to me. I can see it even when the sun is shining on it, and I can see it when it's cloudy. So, in this regard, it's perfect. The only flaw I could find with it is that the data appears with a slight delay. 
And by slight delay, I mean we're talking about 1 to 1.5 seconds, not minutes. And this 1 to 1.5 second lag applies to the speed data as well as the sensor data. So it happens that I reach an intersection, stop. Obviously, I'm not pedaling, yet it still shows that I'm pedaling at 70. It happens that I come to an intersection stop, yet I still see on it that I'm going at 25. We're talking about one and a half seconds, so it's not a big deal. Eh? But it's definitely important for you to know that if you are a serious professional cyclist and you need to see split second data immediately on your cycling computer, then you won't like it and you should change it. However, if you are an amateur cyclist like me who likes to see what kind of performance was achieved on certain sections, likes to see the changes, whether the performance has improved or worsened since the last ride. So these data, if you want to keep track of them, then this computer will be an absolutely perfect choice for you, as it knows everything a computer like this should know. And as I mentioned, due to the AntiPlus protocol support, you can buy many types of sensors for it. And because of the Garmin compatible connection, you can mount it on many holders. So in this regard, it's essentially flawless. Well, I've pretty much said everything about it. So in summary, I can say that if you want a very serious cycling computer, then don't buy this one because very serious cycling computers are priced between 100,000 and 200,000 forints or even above 200,000 and those come with color displays. You can set up segments, segment measurements and navigation on them so navigation appears on it and it can guide you as well. This computer cannot do such things. What this computer can do is measurements and it does this part very well. In return, it doesn't cost now. 100,000 forints or 200,000 forints, but you have to pay around 10 to 11,000 forints for it, which I feel is an incredibly good price, as its capabilities are more than sufficient for the purpose I use it for, and likely more than sufficient for the vast majority of cyclists as well. Well, that's about it. Below the video, you will find a link to the written article. If this computer has caught your attention, Make sure to read it, check out the pictures there, look at the images of the equipment, view the screenshots, and I've also written about a lot of other things that couldn't fit into this video. Read it. Under the video on YouTube, you will find a link to where you can purchase these gadgets. If I receive a coupon code, I will also include it there so you can buy them at the lowest possible price. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be back soon with another review. Until then, goodbye.